Hello everybody and welcome to your guide for Glory of the Shadowlands Hero. This is going to be your reward, the Voracious Gorgia. It is very, very cool and the achievements are super, super fun. Some of them are a little bit difficult. You'll find timestamps down below and on the video for a specific achievement if you're looking for it. You'll also find in the description a Google Doc that we have prepared for you which has every achievement with some notes that you can have on a separate screen or something you can refer to which will take you through them in order and the best order to do them in. So, enjoy! We're going to begin with the Bastion Dungeons. The first is Necrotic Wake, and your first achievement is going to be Bountiful Harvest. This takes place on the second boss. All you do is, once you have cleared to the boss, is go to the opposite corner of the entrance to the boss, and you will find in the bushes a Curio. Once you click on this Curio, it will spawn a large ad. This is something that you need to kill near the boss. So you can actually damage this to low health before engaging the boss. Once the boss is engaged, simply kill the ad nearby. Then you have to wait for the boss to summon Final Harvest. If this is when it spawns the ads. You will kill all the small ads. Then you will wait for the boss to absorb them. Once it absorbs them, the boss will return to full health and it's going to start healing itself and it will do more damage. So all you need to do is out DPS that heal and once you kill it, you'll be fine. Do be careful here though as the breath the dragon does is very, very dangerous and it is what can lead to wipes. Your second achievement here is going to be Surgeon's Supply. This takes place on the third boss, the Surgeon. Inside the large room in the corners where you did the first initial adds after you land, so on the left and the right of actually landing from the second boss, you will see a barrel of spare parts. All you need to do is aim the meat hook, which usually pulls the boss down, into these barrels so it breaks them. It will spawn five spare part adds, kill them, and then kill the boss. This one is a little bit more difficult than it may seem because the adds get increasingly more dangerous, the abomination adds, and they can kill you. So make sure you're focusing down those abominations. The boss is the least dangerous thing in this encounter. The third achievement in here is ready for raiding. This takes place on the last boss. Simply do not take any extra damage from things like Comet Storm. If someone is being dispelled from the ice trap, then you need to not get frozen by them. Avoid all those mechanics and you will get this achievement. This is one that most people pick up naturally. Moving on to the Spies of Ascension, your first achievement is actually going to be on the Goliath boss, the third boss. In the large room, you're going to have to clear all of the trash. That trash you usually try and skip. You need to kill all those things. And what you'll find in there is three robots. In fact, there are four total, but we only need three for the achievement that are deactivated in the corners of the room. What you need to do is drop the Empyrean Ordnance on top of the robot. And when the robot actually uses its full energy to recharge itself, it will activate these offline robots. Then you have 30 seconds to kill them until their energy depletes. You need to do this three times and then finish off the boss and you will gain the achieve. The second achievement in here is experiential and this takes place on the last boss. This one involves you leaping off the platform. Now the Kyrians that are above the platform will die and when they die they leave a spear in the air which is indicated by a blue swirly. So during the fight, you have to have people leap off the platform, which will throw them into the air. Then they need to use the wings in order to hit these spears and then throw the spears at the boss. Five spears must hit the boss total throughout the encounter. This one is a little bit dangerous because the bomb will kill you if you are in the air. So it's best to use someone who has an immunity. You can have one player do this throughout the fight. Take DPS nice and slow. You're in no rush to kill the boss. Just ensure that you don't die to the bomb going off because you will be outside of the protective bubble. Once all five are hit, your achievement, if you are tracking it, will go white. And then you can kill the boss and finish it. The third achievement in here is I can see my house from here. This one seems more difficult than it actually is. After you've defeated the last boss, a new angel will spawn that gives you wings, which will thrust you into an orb, which is just off the platform. In total in the dungeon, five orbs have now appeared. There is one at the very start of the dungeon. There are then three over the second large area that you fight upon and the one that is directly in front of the platform at the last boss. What you need to do here is collect all five orbs within one minute. Now the wings actually are pretty slow, which means it takes around a minute, if not longer, to reach the front of the dungeon to collect that orb. So you can trick this system. The orb takes three minutes to respawn after being collected. So what you do is have one player shoot off the platform and travel to the first orb. They can take their time to do this. Once they have passed through the first orb off the platform, you start a timer. 
okay? So you allow one player to travel to the front of the dungeon and just stand next to where the orb location is. They're not going to collect it. At exactly 2 minutes 30, you're going to have three players activate the wings and fly off the platform. This is before the fifth orb, which is the one that was collected first, has been collected. And then they will travel to the landmass and they are going to collect orbs two, 1, 2, and 3, which are the three orbs floating above the large landmass. This is about midway through the dungeon. Now, this is off to the right. It is not directly in front of you, although we can say left, middle, and right. All players must travel to the right to reach that landmass, and then you will see the orbs in the distance. Make sure your view distance is turned on. About this time, the original orb that was collected for the first player to travel to the beginning of the dungeon will have respawned. So what you do is have the three players who are collecting the middle orbs collect theirs, then signify they've collected theirs. Then the person who has been waiting at the beginning of the dungeon will collect their orb. And the person who has been left waiting at the last boss will collect the final orb. And you should get the achievement. It may take you one or two tries to get this right. But all the orbs have a three minute respawn. So simply if you mess it up, just wait it out and then start it again. Remember the process. Send out one player to the beginning of the dungeon. Once he collects the initial orb at the very start that you have to collect, it always thrusts you through it. Start a timer. At 2 minutes 30, three players will travel to the middle landmass and collect the orbs that are on the left, middle, and right above it. And then you will have the other two collect the final orbs, and this achievement should be very easy. Let's move on to the Ardenweal dungeons, and we'll start with Mists of Turner Scythe. First achievement is going to be Hooked on Hydroponics. This is from the first boss. You need a Night Fae in order to do this achievement. This is the only achievement out of all of them that requires someone to be a specific Covenant. What you will do is have the Night Fae person open the area to the left of the first boss, which allows you to eat the snacks to gain the buff. Inside there, you're going to find seed pods. You need to take one of the seed pods and drop it near the first boss. The first boss is going to cast Tears of the Forest. It needs both of them to be alive to cast this as the, bods, the boss orders its add in order to cast the spell, which is the spell that drops the blue splashes from the sky. These blue splashes need to land on the seed in order to spawn the Hydra that you need to kill for the achievement. This is going to take at least two casts unless you're very lucky of Tears of the Forest. You'll notice if it's working if the seed has grown. Once the Hydra spawns, you need to kill it, then kill the boss. That is the achievement. The next achievement is someone could trip on these. Now, this takes place after the maze boss. So the way you do this is go through the maze as normal, defeat the boss at the end of it, then the maze is completely opened up to you. Simply use the locations which are in the Google Doc linked below in order to find all the toys. There are six toys in total. You'll find them just dotted around in bushes and things. Once you pick up all six, you will get the achieve. This is a personal achievement. Everybody in your group needs to click on these toys in order to get their achievement. The third achievement is Hunger for Knowledge and takes place on the last boss. This one is extremely simple. Drag a Spine more Gorger. These, these are located in the final trash pack just before the boss, so you don't need to go hunting for it. Simply drag it into the middle of the room while you engage the last boss. It is going to eat the cocoon in the middle. Then it will become engorged and large. All you need to do is kill it, then you kill the boss. The only tip I can give you here is once it starts casting feed, do not CC it, do not stun it, otherwise it will not cast the feed spell again. Just drag it in and let it do its thing. Once it is eaten, you will know it will gain a buff. Then you need to kill it, then kill the final boss. Very easy. Let's move on to the other side. This was one that if you want absolute safety, I would recommend you do two runs of this dungeon. Your first run is going to be doing Highly Communicable, which is involving all bosses. This achievement involves gaining Hakkar's Corrupted Blood, and one person, at least one person, needs to have Corrupted Blood throughout the deaths of every boss in the dungeon, including the last boss. The way we did this was to go through the dungeon, clear absolutely all the trash that is necessary in order to reach the bosses so the dungeon is effectively empty. Then you will pull Hakkar, gain Corrupted Blood. The way we did this is the debuff isn't particularly damaging if you're wearing M0 gear on your characters. Anything above will obviously make this easier. So we had two players with Corrupted Blood, simply passing it backwards and forwards between each other so that we always had two players with the Corrupted Blood debuff. The reason we did this is any form of CC, anything that throws you into the air, 
can cause one of them to drop off if it's poorly timed, so having two was for safety. Then you simply go around the dungeon defeating each of the bosses. What you can do to speed this up is use a yak or something that has a multi-person mount so you can mount up between the bosses. As long as both people stay within range, then you're definitely going to keep the buff. The only change we made here, we initially put this on the healer and the DPS is on the final boss, we put it on a healer and a tank so that both of those players could go to the same platform to defeat the boss and activate the totem on the Mahuzler encounter. That allowed the other DPSs to travel to their individual totems so that you can defeat Mahuzler in a single phase. You do not have to do that. Just make sure that you utilize passing this between two players for extra safety. You don't have to do that, but it definitely helps. Another tip here is after the Arden Wheel styled boss, do not use the teleport to go back to the beginning of the dungeon. You can jump up there instead because using the teleport to get back up to the Ardenwield area can cause the debuff to fall off before you get there. On the next run, you can get two achievements done, which means you only have to kill the Millhouse encounter and the Night Fate encounter. You can then leave the dungeon. You do not need to complete it. Our first one is Couples Therapy with Millhouse. You simply use the boss abilities on each of the bosses. So the zigzag line that is marked between two players that Millie puts on you, you can simply use that to stun Millhouse. And then you will have Shadow Fury, which cast, uh, Millhouse does on people when Millie is down on the floor. Use the Shadow Fury to stun Millie and you will get Couples Therapy. The third and final achievement is Thinking With. Collect five orbs. So in, during the Night Fane counter, you will notice markers on the floor, which you probably haven't seen before. You can look up and you will see orbs floating in the sky. You simply use the knock-up mechanic that is included with the boss to fling yourself into the orbs. Track this achievement. It will turn white when you've got all five of them. You can take your time here. It is nice to let the tank do it, but honestly, we had all DPS players doing it. If you're wearing Mythic Zero gear, the detonations that go off that you can take on the face actually don't matter that much if your healer's awake. So you can just take your time and grab this one done. Once you have done the encounter, you can feel free to leave the dungeon. Let's move on to the Maldraxxus dungeons and we will start with Plaguefall. I do recommend you do these achievements for Plaguefall in one and a half runs, although you can absolutely do this in one single run. It's entirely up to you whether you want an easier time or try to push it. Our first achievement I'm going to talk about is Riding With My Slimes. This is a personal achievement, so it's totally fine if people already have this achievement. You don't need to have all five members take part, but if you're doing it in a fresh group, then you want all five players to do this, of course. You have to stand in the sludge surrounding the bosses, which will gain you stacks that do a lot of damage. However, do note you can sit and eat while this is stacking up. It will not break eating. So if you have mage food or some up-to-date food, you can keep your health nice and high while you gain this. Obviously, if you're trying to do this before the encounter, or you can simply stack it up during the encounter. Once you have 10 stacks of the sludge, you will become a Plague Fallen, which makes you slower and reduces your haste by 10%. You simply have to kill the boss while having this Plague Fallen transformation. The transformation lasts two minutes, so you have plenty of time to kill it if your DPS is pretty good, and you'll have no issue getting the buff before the fight and then just nuking the fight, or DPSing the fight to a low percentage, then having everybody transform into a Plague Fallen to ensure they have the buff at the end. If they die, all the debuff falls off, then they do not get credit for having that done. You will gain a buff after you've done each boss, which will stack up as you defeat other bosses, so you can keep a track of how you're doing. Something to note here, which affected our group, is if you are using a troll character, then Voodoo Shuffle will cause this debuff to fall off early. This is going to be very prevalent to the harder boss. Bosses 1, 2, and 3 are very easy to do with this because the sludge surrounds all their platforms. However, the final boss's sludge pool is different and does not cause this debuff. What you have to do is in the area where you drop down, that is where you get the Plague Fallen buff. Before you pull the encounter, you then have two minutes to get from that area and defeat the final boss. This is going to be very close to the wire. Our Voodoo Shuffle player, our Troll player could not do this and had to switch characters. You can do the achievements on different characters. You don't have to collect all achievements on a single character. But it's very close. If your DPS is good, you should be fine or you should reset it. it could, you have two minutes to do this and a lot of groups did this with one second remaining. It really depends on your group's capabilities. Now, if you decided to do Riding With My Slimes in one run and then come back and do the other two, which is what I recommend, our first achievement is going to be Full Gore's Meal, which takes place on the first boss. Once again, you can do this while still doing Riding With My Slimes if you want to be a little bit more efficient. You will notice while looking at the first boss to the right-hand side in the far corner, you will see a meal It is marked in yellow. You can check it's the right one because if you DPS it, it's going to automatically heal up. 
All you need to do is pull the boss next to it and it will eat them. Once it has eaten one of these meals, another one will spawn in another corner. Drag the boss to that one to eat it. And then a third and final one will spawn in a different corner. You simply drag the boss over to eat that and then you defeat the boss. That is as simple as it is. Our third and final achievement in the Plague Fall is going viral and takes place on the second boss with the cauldrons. The idea here is to poison all of the cauldrons before pulling the boss. As you come down the stairs, you will see on the right-hand side table next to the cauldron, a small purple bottle. Once you click that, the player will gain an on-use ability. If you use that ability near a cauldron, it will throw the bottle into it and turn it purple. Shortly after that, for about five seconds, then another bottle will spawn at the recently poisoned cauldron. You then need to click that with using a different player. Four players are required to do this achievement. They then have 10 seconds to reach a different cauldron and poison that one. After they have done that, five seconds later, at the recently poisoned cauldron, not at the initial one, a new bottle will spawn. Another player needs to take this bottle. They have 10 seconds to reach the third cauldron. Then, five seconds after that, at the third cauldron location, the final bottle will spawn, where another player needs to take 10 seconds to poison the final cauldron. You have 60 seconds from the moment you poison the first cauldron to do all four. And obviously, the simplest way of doing this is to follow the boss around. Wait at the platform where the boss has landed. When he leaps away, poison the cauldron where he was just stood. Then the next person goes to the next platform as he has leapt away from that one. And you follow the boss in a circle around, using four players to poison them all. Once you've poisoned all four cauldrons and they're all purple, you then have infinite time. You can take your time. It's all set up. All you need to then do is defeat the boss while defeating the slimes, two of the slimes that are spawned from the purple cauldrons, which means nuking him and just ignoring the slimes is not a good idea. You will not get the achieved. You need to get this done. If you mess this up, you can pull the boss and die to reset the encounter, and that will allow you to try again. So you can use a hunter to feign death, or you can simply have someone pull it on their own and get killed. It will reset the encounter, and then you can try it again. Our next dungeon is Theater of Pain. The first achievement here is on the first boss, and it's called Three Choose One. This simply involves you defeating one of the last bosses last, and you need to do that with all three bosses. So pick a boss, decide you're going to kill that one last, then just go out of the encounter and reset it. If you're quick enough after doing this, you can run out before the RP starts that drags you down into the bottom of the pit. So you can go out and reset very quickly. Or you can sp simply speak to the guy at the bottom of the pit and he will teleport you back out. So you can go and reset the encounter that way. Once you've done all three bosses dying last, then you get your achievement. It's a personal achievement. So you might find some people in your group have already done one of the bosses last or done two of them. So you only need to do one of the bosses last in order to get the achievement. Our next achievement is Fresh Meat, which takes place on the Meat Hook boss. There are two hunks of meat in the left-hand side of the room as you walk in, and then there is another hunk of meat in the right-hand side at the far end of the room. The boss casts Tenderize on the tank, so the tank simply needs to move the boss to the hunk of meat. Have him cast Tenderize, that will smash the meat. If you Tenderize both meats, you have done the achievement and you need to kill the boss in order to get it. Our final achievement here is Royal Rumble and takes place on the last boss. You need to get the boss to 50%. At that point, two ghostly contenders will be targetable in the audience that is watching you doing the fight. You need to emote slash challenge on them in order to activate them. They will then become part of the encounter. Simply kill them both, then kill the final boss in order to get this achievement. Our final zone is Revendreth. I'm going to start with Sanguine Depths, which has the most difficult achievements you're going to do throughout your achievement process. Let us begin with I Only Have Eyes For You, which is the summoning of an extra boss in the dungeon. Within the dungeon, there are two gems. There is one very early on. Instead of turning right as you traditionally would to, you will notice that past that, there are two extra rooms. One of them contains a friendly Goliath called Daruka, the Unbreakable. You are going to use the two gems that you find in the dungeon on Daruka in order to make him hostile so you can defeat him. Defeating him is what gets you the achievement. The first gem is in the room after Daruka on the left-hand side, hidden behind a little bookcase. Pick that one up. Now, once you have these and use them on Daruka, you have 10 minutes in order to make him hostile. So I recommend you ignore this gem for now. Just clear the trash so you know where it is, but then you're going to continue on with the dungeon. The second gem is actually located in the final room before the last boss, after you've done the gauntlet. It is in the coffin on the right-hand side. So once you've defeated all the trash and finished the gauntlet, and you are only remaining with the final boss in the dungeon, simply collect the last gem, 
Collect the first gem, run them both to Daruka, activate them both at the same time, defeat him, and you will get the achievement. The second achievement in here is very difficult and it's called Residue Evil and it takes place on the third boss in the prison area of the dungeon. In the prison cells, all around the circle are forlorn captives. There are two in three of these cells, there is one in an individual cell, and there are three of them in one cell, giving us eight total. You have to use the boss ad, not the boss itself, the ad the boss spawns during the encounter in order to create a pool of red residue on the floor, which needs to leak into these cells and defeat these forlorn captives. In order to do that, you're going to need a very large pool of red. Now, the way you get that is to let the ad live while he's AoEing down the group. So this can be done with two healers if you really want to be extra safe. You need to kill the ad right outside of the prison cells when it has 80 energy or above or has detonated itself, which is what it will do if it manages to cap out its energy. You need to clear all the trash on the prison ring before even trying. This one is very heavy on damage as you're going to have to deal with the boss mechanics at the same time, as well as the spinning lasers going around the room. I recommend you have someone calling out these spinning lasers because the rest of the players will be focused on other things throughout the encounter. Please make sure to take as little damage as possible as you can die extremely easy doing this encounter. However, if you do die during the encounter just as I did, as long as the group finishes it off, you'll be absolutely fine and get the achievement. It is not a personal achievement and you do not need to be alive at the end of it in order to get it. The third and final achievement is the most difficult out of all of the things for Glory of the Shadowlands Hero. It is called Carled Shot. It takes place on the last boss. This is going to take you upwards of two at best, if not four runs, until you get higher gear. It took us in total five runs to complete this achievement. Before the gauntlet begins, leading to the last boss, there are five Anima Lanterns on the right-hand side. Clicking on these Lanterns will give you a buff, not a debuff, a buff called Shadow Ball. This is something that you can click away if you happen to mess it up, but once you pull General Carl, it is going to despawn all of the anima containers, and General Carl is in the first pack of the gauntlet, which means you only have one try per run of the Sanguine Depths in order to get this achievement for your players. It is a personal achievement, so what you can do is two players and two players and one player using three separate runs, or you can try two players and three players, assuming you have the healing for it. But this buff, this Shadow Ball buff, does a tremendous amount of damage, taking any ex excess damage from any of the mechanics during the gauntlet or during the final boss, as you have to keep this buff throughout the final boss, is probably going to cause a death and stress your healer out. So please, please be aware that bringing either a second healer or something like a Rep Paladin or a Boomkin who can do extra healing is very, very helpful here for when people start spiking. The methodology of this is also quite difficult. So you're going to have to do the entire gauntlet with players with the Shadow Ball. I'm going to call it a debuff from now on. With the Shadow Ball debuff all the way through the gauntlet. You do drop out of can, uh, combat after the gauntlet so you can sit and let your healer drink before engaging the final boss. The way you get this achievement is during the final boss, you're going to have to wait for him to cast the correct Gloom Squall. Gloom Squall is what knocks you back and you typically use the player's shield in order to prevent you being knocked off the platform. What we found is it seemed set in stone Watch which order Gloom Squall took place in, and the Gloom Squall we needed for the achievement was always the third cast. So you must take DPS very slow here, and your focus must be on avoiding damaging mechanics, because of course your healer is going to be stressed out. Once the boss, once General Carl goes to the right-hand side of the platform as you enter the room to cast Gloom Squall, the players doing this achievement must stand facing the lantern dangling off the wall opposite the left side of the platform. The Gloom Squall is then going to knock them off the platform towards this lantern, where you will then click the lantern to put the ball into the lantern, which will then bring you back to the platform. If you don't click it in time, you will fall to your death and your achievement is over. Any other mistakes that happen, such as your death during the gauntlet or death during the boss from other mechanics, your achievement is over, which is why this may take multiple runs to get it done for your entire party. The trick to doing this is that you can focus the lantern on the opposite side of the wall, and then you combined interact with mouse over to something like mouse wheel. And as you are flying through the air from Gloom Squall, if you roll the mouse wheel in the direction you have set in your key bindings, 
over your focus target, then you are spamming interact. So the moment you are able to interact with the lantern, you will click it. This is very useful as some people are trying to spam click it just by flying over and occasionally that did not work and they fell to their deaths. To make sure extra safe, simply use mouse over focus on the lantern, bind interact with mouse over to a mouse wheel or something along those lines. And as you're getting gloom squalled, put your mouse over your focus target and roll that wheel and you should be fine. This is easily the most difficult achievement. Try not to get frustrated and please make your players aware going into this that they may take some time and it's probably going to take several runs of Sanguine Depths. But this is also an achievement that becomes infinitely easier with higher gear. Something you should bear in mind. Our final dungeon for achievements is going to be Halls of Atonement. Our first achievement is going to be picking up the pieces and takes place on the first boss. You're going to have to clear most of the trash in the area before the first boss. That includes both platforms and the pathways to it. This achievement is done by pulling the first boss while he's doing all of his mechanics. Remember at full energy he will do the spinning sunlight radiance and he has the ring around him that you cannot travel around. So you need to make sure that you're aware of the boss's energy when you position him so that people can travel in a circle around the boss and that players don't drift too far away so they start getting feared for being too far away from the boss. You need to drag the boss to all three of the locations where the shards are spawned that actually activate the boss. The large stone creatures that you need to kill in order to activate the first boss, where they are stood when they spawn, that is where the boss needs to be pulled to during the encounter. So you simply take it slow, move around the dungeon as a team, make sure there's no trash up to cause you problems, and take your time when the boss is nearly full energy as he's about to do his spinning laser beams, and they can kill you extremely easily. Make it as easy as you possibly can on yourselves, then kill the boss. It does not matter where you killed the shards, so you can't scan this by bringing the shards down to near the boss and having them killed there. The boss needs to go to the shards platforms. You will see a pulse, a red wave pulse come out of the boss, signaling that he has reached that platform. That is your clue that you've got the platform. You'll see this red glow come out of him. The second achievement is called Breaking Bad, and it takes place on the second boss in the dungeon. The small stone fiends that spawn during the encounter, you need to crack and shatter 18 of them in one single shatter, uh, shattering leap in order to get this achievement. Six of them spawn per wave, so although it's technically three waves, it is best to do this with four waves. And remember, as you're not shattering the old ones, they are going to respawn, which is a good thing. This allows you time to reposition them in order to use something like mass grip or interrupts in order to get gather them in a nice tight small spot once you've had four waves and you've managed to get them all into one singular location make sure they're all dead so they can be shattered then the next player who gets shattering leaps cast on them just needs to stand on where the ads are the moment this happens your achievement is done and you are congratulated Our final achievement that you should be getting is nobody puts denathrius in the corner and it takes place on the last boss there is no achievement for the third boss once you get the boss to 40%, he's going to use his final Chamberlain's Chorus. This is the ability where he cycles through dragging all of the statues into the middle, and also where he casts Ritual of Woe at the statues. Once that is done, the boss has very few abilities left, but one thing he does have is the Telekinetic Toss, where he tosses one statue at a player. All you need to do is get three statues into three corners of the room. So if it looks like a corner, it is a corner. I recommend you track the achievement. It will turn white when the statues are in their correct locations. Some of the places we placed them weren't technically corners, but you can see in the video exactly where we put them. The boss tends to use the closest statue uh, to cast at you, so you can move around as a team to bait the statue into a specific location. If the statues bump into other statues, they will stop, so really take your time with this achievement. DPS the boss down to 40%, then just take your time while doing slow damage, because once the statues are in place, you want to kill him before his next telekinetic toss, in case that messes up your process. Sl DPS him slowly, move around as a group, bait the statues into a corner once one is in a corner then quickly move to another corner so you can bait another statue into a different corner as soon as that achievement turns white defeat the boss gg congratulations on your mount i hope that was helpful to you guys again check out the google doc down below in order to quickly skip through this while you're doing the achievement